Hello students, I am Ravika Purohit. I have been interacting with you all through my psychology classes. And as the means is around the corner and you already have uh, successfully attempted the essay and the GS papers and the time has come for the optional. So for psychology optional students, I thought I should come forward for the last minute suggestions that I can give you because I uh, always believe that primacy and the recency effect that uh, we all have studied in memory, they are practically a part of life uh, throughout. The primacy effect has worked and you have all done the revisions, the answer writing practices and everything. You are in the last leg of your uh, psychology preparation, wherein you are strengthening your mind to write, you are revising things, and the recency effect can be these last three, four days, wherein you need to control your anxiety. You need to manage, uh, you know, those cramps or butterflies that you feel in the stomach that, oh, what will happen when I'll be uh, writing the psychology paper? How would it be? What were the questions? Uh, what would the questions be like? Right? So keeping yourself calm, keeping yourself balanced, we need to uh, stay focused for these uh, three, four days, because you know that psychology or uh, for that matter, any option has a very important role to play in your selection. And you all have done the hard work. You all have studied well. You all are revising. So the last minute uh, suggestions would, uh, I hope, can work as uh, the recency effect and uh, they might be helpful for you. Uh, while you are attempting the paper. So quickly, uh, I'll be discussing few points that should be kept in mind while you are attempting the paper, while you are writing psychology answers. So first, uh, we'll be discussing the general points that you need to uh, keep in mind, right? Because for the students who are writing the paper for the first time, right? So what you need to focus is, because uh, it's very important that the first five, 10 minutes that you spend with the paper should be with a very calm and peaceful mind because an anxious mind will result in cognitive narrowing. You will feel that the uh, content that you have learned is not coming out, right? You're not able to write, you're not able to understand. So the first thing is keep yourself calm. The, and then uh, for first uh, three, four minutes, what you need to do is you need to quickly uh, have an overview of the paper, right? Then uh, just mark and select the questions that you need to attempt, right? Because question one and question five are compulsory. And then you need to select three more questions from both the sections. So uh, apart from first and fifth question, you need to... Uh, select that, yes, these are the comfortable areas that uh, I can pick up, right? And these are the uh, questions in which I can express myself better. So quickly have an overview and select the questions. Then the next important thing is that you need to select the order in which you would be attempting the questions, because that is also very important. If you, uh, by the way, if you are selecting a question which you know, you are not that comfortable, right? So it can take a lot of time. If you are, uh, if you have consumed 15, 20 minutes for attempting a 110 marker, it means that you will surely face trouble while attempting the complete paper. So select the order. And preferably what I feel is, first you should start by attempting the first question, right? Because uh, it also has high potential in terms of building up the impression. And uh, it has high potential because the questions asked would lay the ground which will convey to the examiner that yes, you are a learned person. You have attempted the things well. You have understood the things well. Right? They are a very high potential questions. Question one and question five. So after question number one, select any two other questions uh, the long questions, I would say, after attempting those two, 
then shift to question number five again the compulsory one and then keep one question for the last wherein uh, you can quickly answer because that will reduce the pressure but keeping question number five for the last means that you are doing injustice with the high potential questions which you can score because uh, maximum uh, students they fa falter on this aspect right so after a quick overview and selection of the order now the next question is uh, or the next thing that should be kept in mind is you have to read the question and understand it very carefully because if you are uh, understanding the question well half the battle is won because in the anxiety and that state of mind what uh, goes wrong is the interpretation as i told you cognitive narrowing will occur right but it is up to you that how you will handle the things so read the question carefully and for this uh, aspect what you can do is you can mark the keywords of the question that what uh, is it the question is demanding you uh, to answer on two aspects on three aspects and what is the connectivity that is demanded is it asking you to critically analyze is it asking you to quote studies and relevant examples so just encircle them because you know uh, von Ristroff effect will always uh, work right so when you will uh, encircle the keywords they will be highlighted in the paper so once you are uh, you start attempting the question right so there is a an, uh, always a tendency that you would at least uh, after writing half of uh, the page there is a tendency that you will revisit it again right so once you revisit it all those encircled keywords will again be, uh, be seen so you will not uh, you know because this happens a lot wherein despite knowing the content you know we know the question we become very happy and in that state of elation we tend to overlook the third aspect that was asked or the second aspect that was asked so despite knowing the things we fall short of marks right so read the question carefully uh, mark the keywords and then start writing right so this will give you the clarity and the confidence to attempt the paper and once the first half an hour is confidently dealt then there is no looking backwards right so uh, means is a game of what it is a game of content plus your psychological strength so that should not get lost anywhere and any time in the paper because uh, sometimes हो सकता है क्वेश्चंस ऐसे हो जो आपने नहीं कभी देखे हो नहीं कभी पढ़े हो बट वेन यू आर कॉन्फिडेंट इनफ देन नेचुरली योर माइंड विल कनेक्ट विद वॉट यू हैव रेड यू विल बी एबल टू जनरेट एग्जाम्पल्स यू वुड बी एबल टू जनरेट आर्ग्यूमेंट्स एंड दिस इज वॉट इज रिक्वायर्ड राइट एंड देन फॉर द जनरल इंस्ट्रक्शन द नेक्स्ट पॉइंट दैट आई वॉन्ट टू डिस्कस इज अबाउट द विजुअल अपील ऑफ द पेपर right uh, just imagine that if your mother serves you dinner and you know uh, it's the dal the sabzi the rice and the chapati they are not given in bowls you know she's poured everything in one plate and then uh, there's another plate wherein the dal the sabzi the raita rice chapati everything is differentiated bowls mein dal ke di gayi hai so what do you think uh, you would enjoy more the food is the same for normal beings right uh, upsc aspirants they might have a different tendency and taste all together when it comes to you know having food because of that tough uh, journey that we have to uh, deal right we are okay with everything then but uh, when uh, we are you know in a relaxed mode we always prefer the things that are you know they have a visual appeal so it's very important that you underline the keywords in the answer you make proper headings you properly structure your answer use flow charts use diagrams wherever you uh, feel that yes you have a lot to convey and you can connect things so use flow charts uh, use proper headings underline uh, the key points right uh, do not please uh, you know underlying underline at least four or five words in one sentence or two sentences because then the whole purpose is lost make the things outstand just focus on the words which you want that the examiner should read right because that will 
uh, enhance the likability of the script. The examiner will also enjoy reading, right? So you need to maintain these general uh, points in mind. And apart from these, I feel that there is more to an optional because uh, in GS, UPSC is checking your general knowledge or general answering abilities, as the name says. But when it comes to optional, it gives you a choice and it is checking you on the depth of things. So for an optional, it is very important that the depth in your content, the depth in your arguments, the depth in your examples should be reflected in your answers. So for that, you uh, need to frame the answers that should reflect your personality. Because after all, means is nothing but a projective test. It is testing your personality. And with uh, this year's changing uh, essay paper, the UPSE has uh, strengthened this notion very well again, that yes, we are not looking for mere uh, road learners, or those who are running before content, right? We are checking you on certain bureaucratic traits. We want a certain personality. So that should be reflected in your answers. So keeping those bureaucratic traits in mind, which UPSC is looking for, you need to focus on few aspects of answer writing. And for that, uh, there are six, seven principles, which I feel, uh, is very important when you're writing the main body or the introduction or the conclusion, in fact, right? So first thing is organization. The more you organize your answer, the more you organize your thoughts, the better it is, right? So for that, you need to structure your answer well. Just touch upon the broadest aspects first and then jump on to writing the specific points. What happens is then that when uh, we start by, you know, writing very specific things, we miss on to the basic, uh, I would say the soul that the question is asking. So the first approach should be organization and the broadest uh, classification or broadest idea that you can come up with respect to that particular answer. Then the second thing is the simplicity. As we all know, and it is a law of perception and it is a law of life, that it is simplicity that attracts. And this, uh, I feel, should be kept in the answers also. I'm not talking about average content. I'm talking about simplicity and originality of thoughts because uh, the more uh, easy and simplified the communication is through the answers, the more appeal it has with the examiner. So express your thoughts with a flow, with a simple uh, expression, because complex things are never uh, enjoyed by anything. You know, a piece of very complex writing does not make sense. We lose interest, right? So jitna simple aap likhoge, jitna simple aap apne thoughts ko convey karoge, the better the examiner would uh, feel, right? They will have more receptivity and more uh, acceptance, right? Then uh, the third important aspect is, as I told you, depth. The answers should re reflect depth. Or depth kaise aayegi? By revising the content that you have done, right? So try to uh, talk about the different, different theoretical perspectives, different, different research work, right? That should uh, show to the examiner that yes, you have read a lot, you have incorporated the things and that should be reflected in the answers. Shallow answers in the optional won't work, right? So revise well, put them in uh, your simple and organized thoughts, right? And then uh, the next important aspect is connectivity of the topics. And by connectivity of the topics, I mean that uh, don't limit yourself only to psychology. When you are dealing with uh, the optional paper, right, you should have uh, a mindset wherein you should apply the optional into the real settings. 
because this is what every optional has paper two right and it demands what the application of what you have learned in paper one so connect the topics connect your gs examples connect your public policies uh, connect uh, different different uh, developmental goals that we have right they all should be connected wherever you feel that yes you have got the uh, chance to do so right then uh, next important thing that i feel is the answer should have flow and clarity and by flow i mean that you know it should not look like mere reproduction of the bookish language or the notes that you have prepared when the question is asked the things should naturally flow the things should naturally connect and what you will connect the keywords that you have marked while reading the question because that will show that yes you have done what is required for a candidate that is जो आपको क्वेश्चन में पूछा गया है वो उसको आप नेचुरली ही कनेक्ट कर रहे हो उसको एक फ्लो में लिख रहे हो राइट द थिंग्स शुड बी वेरी वेरी क्लियर टू अंडरस्टैंड राइट देन द लास्ट इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग दैट आई फील इज दैट द क्वालिटी ऑफ एग्जांपल्स शुड बी सच दैट दे शुड रिफ्लेक्ट द bureaucratic ideals the bureaucratic traits right so choose your examples very wisely as a civil servant you need to uh, take a balanced look at the civil society the citizens the government the private sector so make it a point that when you are giving examples they should not be childish ram did this sita did this sham did this no all these things won't work cat dog क्या रहता है कि हम लोग इसी एग्जांपल्स में उलझ जाते हैं यू आर नॉट एबल टू एक्सप्रेस थिंक बिग यू आर गोइंग टू बी सिलेक्टेड एज अ सिविल सर्वेंट सो डू यू थिंक दे आर डिमांडिंग दीज शैलो एग्जांपल्स फ्रॉम यू नो दे डिमांड कनेक्टिविटी एंड कनेक्टिविटी कैन बी रिफ्लेक्टेड थ्रू द एग्जांपल्स राइट यू शुड टॉक अबाउट कल्चरल कोहिजन यू शुड टॉक अबाउट योर डिसीजन मेकिंग effective dis uh, decision making you should talk about uh, the bureau pathologies how they can be overcome right you should be talking about the productivity of the organizations you should be talking about social welfare you should be talking about motivated workforce you should be talking about uh, the outcomes of the public policies how you can uh, make them better right so all these things should be reflective and they can be reflective in the uh, conclusions also in uh, forward looking conclusions what you need to do is you need to connect to the basic ideals of the constitution you need to connect with what uh, the bureaucratic traits are demanding out of you right so you should touch upon the vulnerable sections you should touch upon uh, all the stakeholders that are involved in the society right and the uh, introductions for introduction uh, i request you with folded hands that please do not uh, answer all the questions by mere definitions it is a very monotonous way right don't uh, if the question is on uh, from the chapter of attitude until and unless asked please don't write the definition of attitude you what you can do is you can express attitude in your own terms in your own words wherein you are touching upon uh, the different functions the different uh, uh, components in three four lines right so that can be a good introduction wherein you are writing the gist so uh, that shows that you have a reflective personality so i believe that the introductions have to be reflective your conclusions they have to be forward looking right and this is how you can maintain a balance in the answer balance in the answer doesn't mean that if you are writing five uh, negative points about a topic you need to write five positive no a balance answer always would be reflected in terms of as i told you the examples wherein you are balancing your viewpoint you are not writing extreme uh, uh, things right you are taking uh, along the civil society the public the government organization the uh, private 
ऑर्गेनाइजेशंस सो सबका व्यू पॉइंट आप साथ लेके चल रहे हो एंड दिस इज हाउ यू नो योर आंसर विल बिकम अ बैलेंस्ड आंसर राइट सो कीपिंग ऑल दीज थिंग्स इन माइंड यू नीड टू अटेम्प्ट द अपकमिंग पेपर एंड देन अनदर एस्पेक्ट दैट आई वांट टू डिस्कस इज स्टूडेंट्स दे यूजुअली हैव अ प्रॉब्लम यू नो दे आस्क मी दैट मैम should we have a different approach while attempting paper 1 questions and a different approach when we are writing the answers for paper 2 and for them uh, i have one answer that uh, for paper 1 you know they are checking you on the theoretical base of psychology so if you have prepared well uh, the 80% of the answer you know you will be able to answer through through the theories and the literature that you have read about psychology so the focus of the answers should be uh, using the theories right and in the conclusion you can write the current trend or the current work that is that is being done in that particular uh, topic right suppose if they are asking you about the homeostatic theory you can write in the conclusion by adding on to the prospective element and the positive incentive theory that is a recent addition to it so that will show to the examiner that yes you have taken a step uh, forward and you have gone beyond books you were curious and so uh, you updated yourself right uh, so uh, we have discussed all these things in the class so you need not worry right and uh, another thing is paper 1 when you will see the questions for yourself if you have revised well you have studied well you have uh, you know stepped out of this uh, shell of just focusing on a b c d coaching notes and you have taken a step forward and did uh, the things on your own right so then you will yourself realize that paper 1 comprises mainly of the theoretical base so her answer aapka 70 80% theory se hi answer ho jayega because agar aap koi bhi topic dekhoge there is a lot of literature on it to jo aapne gist likhi hai jo bhi cheeze aapne revise kari hai make it a point that you are uh, framing them and using them as per the demand of the question right so that will uh, help you to stick on to the context and the demand of the question right and as far as your uh, application of paper 2 is concerned the attempting the questions paper 2 focuses upon the application of the learnings of paper 1 so uh, 50% of the answer content would come from paper 1 wherein you are applying the theories right you are ho sakta hai ki aap koi general point likho but bracket mein do mention uh any particular theory that you have uh, read right if you are talking about intrinsic motivation in bracket write down decky and rian fine so this way you can connect to the topics of paper 1 so 50% content aapka paper 1 uh, se aa jayega paper 2 ke liye then you need to focus upon few recent research works right and then you need to put in examples and more importantly you need to apply psychological principles and write uh, your points from gs as well because apply kya kahan karoge you will be applying it in your daily life and nothing better uh, you read what is happening in daily life than a newspaper so jo hum newspaper pad rahe hain jisko hum gs kehte hain it is nothing but it is the application of uh, your psychological principles in real life so you need to pick up examples from there right so this is how you will be attempting the things as i told you you need to connect with public policies your cultural cohesion your social integration all the things that are happening around right so uh, keep this focus in mind and as you know that i feel that since few years upsc has made this thin line between paper 1 and paper 2 very blur because we are seeing that many questions of paper 2 are being asked in paper 1 and many theoretical questions are being asked in paper 2 right so don't stop yourself by thinking that this is paper 1 answer question so i cannot write the examples from gs no when your mind is naturally you know coming up with those connections with those examples that you have done you have studied hard if they are coming don't stop yourself just write a line or two on that 
right so this way you will be able to do justice with the exam and the paper and apart from all these things the different approaches the general instructions what is needed is patience you all have studied well it's been uh, more than a year for some it, it can be two years three years you have put your heart and soul in this uh, journey so have belief and faith in your hard work it will pay the right time uh, has come right just believe in yourself give your 100 percent just revise in these three four uh, days and if you have not done any answer writing practice that's okay what can be done right so just keep these uh, points in mind and uh, as the paper is on sunday so i feel that if you are writing some paper or some practice answer please uh, do it by thursday friday saturday keep your mind free because it is the free and the calm mind that will generate ideas right humne creativity mein padha hai ki jo hamare acche ideas hain they come after a period of waiting so keep your mind relaxed i'm not saying that uh, do away with books yes be with the books study for 7 8 hours but have a, a peace of mind calm your nerves down you will be uh, able to do the best and write the best keep these things in mind one important thing is you need to display bureaucratic traits and this is what upsc is looking for right so keep your spirits high you are there your time to become a bureaucrat has come just uh, wisely utilize the knowledge that you have accumulated over the years and present it in front of upsc the way it wants to see uh, so all the best do well and we'll be uh, discussing few more things in time to come so see you all and God bless you.